My name is Charles Depier Hargrave. I went strictly to the high school department. I was at Swift from 1941 to 1945. And now keep in mind that I was a youngster really when I was at Swift in that I had lived there for five years from 36 to 41 because my father was president. So I was there as a youngster attending Price Public here and then from there to, uh, to Swift. Well, primarily I admit, remember more of the sports activities as a youngster rather than the football games and the, that type of activity. However, as a student, obviously I was there as a full-time student, as a boarding student on campus. Both times I was living on campus. <laughs> oh no, I was a, I was a model student. So. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm living there and I'm also changed from living there to living there as a student. So it was nearly eight straight years at Swift as a student and as a, re as, that was my home. Uh, what it was is that Swift, was Swift Memorial Junior College, the high school department of the college. So he was president of the, the overall activity. My father came to Swift in, I believe, 1926 as head of the Department of Education. He was there under Dr. Tucker, who was then president. So my father stayed at Swift in the Department of Education from 26 to 36. He assumed the presidency in 36 and was there for five years to 41. I, I really didn't feel the responsibility of that since because the new president, Dr. Lee, had been under with my father in the meantime under Dr. Tucker. And at the same time, Roberta Lee, who was the daughter of Dr. Lee, and I were students at the same time. So I didn't feel any, any undue responsibility for the fact. But obviously my father was, I mean, he was an influence while I was at Swift, obviously. He was a, or was a Presbyterian minister and served a number of parishes in Kentucky and in Tennessee, but most recently in Danbridge, Tennessee, where he served, I think, oh, Straw Plains, New Market, and Danbridge at the same time. I'm not aware of how he and Dr. Tucker became acquainted, but I do know that at that time he went to Rogersville in, 30, in 26. The main thing, of course, we were in a boarding complex, which meant that we had meals, we went to class, lunch, class, and that, so you were, your day was already influenced by everything that was in a, in a boarding school environment. At the same time, a number of youngsters from Rogersville itself were day students. So they were with us from say eight to five, and then we were there from 24 seven as a student, boarding student. Well, keep in mind as a boarding school, you're there 24 seven, so you're eating with the same people for literally nine months out of the year, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you, you, you get to know them. And then of course we had the uh, devotional services in the morning, and you had the devotional services sometime in the evening, Sunday services, so you, you're seeing the people all the time. And at that time we had zero dancing. The point I'm trying to make is the recreation was strictly on campus. And what we did, we saw everybody every day, basically all the time. Well, basically the Swift had a very, we like to say a very good football team. I didn't, I played them my senior year, but again, only because if you remember, that was 44, 45, the time of the war. So all of the larger uh, men were out at playing football, I mean, in the army or in the military. So that uh, I think one of the chief recreational outlets would be softball, football for male students. And the young women did not have a uh, basketball team at that time. Well, at the time I was there, people were leaving for the war rather than returning. And maybe my senior year in high school, we had a number of persons to return. But basically, the main impact that the war had on us, limited food or limited menu. 
And it is rumored that we had horse meat, but I don't believe that was the case, really. That, but that's, that was the story. But that, that's where we noticed it. And of course, there were limited activities as far as the war was concerned, we could, could or could not do. No, I, I don't remember favorite meals as such, but again, and keep in mind that even when on Saturdays and Sundays, well, we were still in a limited area. But food is the one thing I remember more about restrictions during the war. I graduated in 45. No, at the at time of desegregation, I had finished college and was working at the time. So I, I, can't, I can't react to how it, but I know that at Swift, of course, was concerned because at that time, the, as you all know, Swift was sponsored was funded almost entirely by the Presbyterian Church. And at the time of desegregation, the Presbyterian Church withdrew its support of SWIFT, and therefore SWIFT had to be funded through local uh, sources, and as a result, did not last too long after desegregation. SWIFT served as a uh, feeding, feeder school for Johnson C. Smith in Charlotte. Both were Presbyterian schools. Now, the reason I mention it is, and I also went to J.C. Smith, but the point is, a number of our faculty members came from J.C. Smith. So I remember those because they were Smith, Smith people as a result. And if you say which faculty members did I remember, I remember more of the football coaches and then I do the actual faculty members as such. And as you can see, I was sports-oriented uh, for, for the time. Well, the, the, again, the name you're going to hear so many times is going to be Kyle Patton. He was a fellow that would be able to kick the ball from the one end zone to the other end zone. But in all fairness, Swift played other junior colleges, Friendship, Clafton, and also played a number of Morristown Junior College and played a, f a few of the senior or the four-year schools such as Bluefield State and some others. And it had a reasonable uh, record. At the same time, because of the war, Swift started playing schools like Austin High, they would play the Langston High, some of the high schools as well as the colleges. Do you remember the, the big rivalry? Like the game that was the game? Morristown. Morristown, Morristown was, was the game, both in basketball and football, even though Smith did not, Smith Swift did not have a, a formal basketball team, we still engaged them in basketball, softball, and football. The idea was to beat them. I mean, I, that, that was the, always the idea, but that, that was the outstanding rivalry. And as I've said, Morristown and Junior College, Swift and Junior College, that you had that continuing rivalry. Swift was sponsored was funded by the Presbyterian Church. So you had the influence of the church in just about everything we did in terms of the school activities. I mentioned the matter of the uh, worship service at the morning, worship service at the evening, Sunday evening services. Uh, so that, that was the, a major influence on what happened at, at SWIFT throughout, throughout the day, throughout the week throughout the year. Strong point of SWIFT was that because it was a junior college, it meant that it had a faculty that usually had the master's degree or better. In fact, <coughs> the master's. So therefore, the, the people in the high school department were therefore taught by persons who were of a different uh, caliber than the usual high school. So the impact was more on the high school students than it was on the junior college students because you would expect junior college people to be schooled by masters or doctorate, but high school students don't usually get that opportunity. So I, and as a result, a number of Swiftites went on to, to four-year colleges and other schools and, and made outstanding records. 